This video is brought to you by UG International, the industry leader of high CRI LED technologies. Welcome everyone to today's show. I'm your host Eric. So today I'm going to be showing off one of my first LED video lights and that is this guy, an LED video spotlight that is primarily made up of a PVC pipe, a reflector, and a lot of goodies inside. So stick around and I'm going to be showing you how I built this guy so hopefully you can build your own. So one of the most important aspects of this light project is actually the light itself. So we're going to be using the UGBC series high CRI LED emitter. This emitter is going to be running off of 100 watts and it's going to offer some really high CRI which is color rendering index quality. So we're going to be getting really high quality light. But because the LEDs require 100 watts of power, they get very hot. So we're going to have to mount the LED to a heat sink. There's many kind of heat sinks out there for LEDs. I found this square one, which would be perfect for the project. Because my heat sink is already designed for LED light emitters, there's some screws in place that I can easily take out and then install the light emitter. Though I do want to make sure I have thermal paste or thermal compounds on the light emitter itself, this way we have proper heat transfer into the heat sink. After the LED is installed to the heat sink, I don't want to leave it exposed to the elements to get dirty or broken. So I'm going to install a reflector as well as a lens to go over it. This came with my heat sink but can also be purchased separately. Now we're going to want to remove the fan as well as the fan cover from the heat sink. Don't throw them out because we're going to be using them later. With the LED installed to the heat sink and the reflector and the lens installed, we're going to jump outside and start working on the actual housing of this LED spotlight. And we're going to be using a PVC pipe. The PVC pipe I'm using is 4 inches in diameter and we need to cut a 9 inch segment from it. So after cutting the piece of PVC pipe, I tried putting my heat sink inside of it to find out that the heat sink is just a tad too big and I could not find a smaller heat sink that would work for this project. So I'm going to modify the heat sink. Using a Dremel, we're going to cut off the two sides of the heat sink that stick out. This is why we removed the fan earlier because these two sides that stick out was what supported the fan. Even with the sides removed from the heat sink, the heat sink still does not fit in the PVC pipe. So we're going to have to remove the corners now of the heat sink. But after removing the corners, the heat sink should fit into the PVC pipe very well. Now grab that fan from the heat sink we had earlier and we're going to want to cut the corners off of the fan as well. This way the fan will now fit into the PVC pipe. Once you make sure that the heat sink and the fan fit into the PVC pipe, lay them on top of each other and we're going to glue them together with some super glue. But before gluing these together, you might want to connect a battery to the fan just to make sure the air is flowing in the right direction. You want the air flowing away from the heat sink and not towards it. So after the glue dries, the fan should be very firmly connected to the heat sink. So we're going to take this to our soldering station and we want to solder some wires to the actual LED itself. This way we can power the LED later. Unfortunately, that might mean you have to remove the reflector and the lens from the LED again, but it's not that big of a deal since it only should be held on with screws. At this point, feel free to test out the LED with 30 volts of DC electricity. Just be careful not to put too much electricity in it since you could actually burn the LED out. And this is an expensive LED, so we don't want to do that. But also, don't get ahead of yourself because we'll cover the electricity portion of the LED a bit later. But anyway, with the wiring complete on the LED, feel free to put the reflector and the lens back on it for the final time. Anyway, at this point, we're going to be working on our PVC pipe. So you get your 9 inches of PVC pipe and a marker, and we're going to want to mark some holes on it so we can drill them later. We're going to make a total of three air vents. So on the top, I put two markings on either side where I'm going to drill a hole, and then use a Dremel tool to connect each hole, and that'll be my air vent. And then on the bottom, I also mark two holes, going to drill them, and then use a Dremel tool to cut the air vent out. We're also going to be drilling a quarter inch hole in the bottom, right about in the middle, and this is where our tripod mount's going to be. So I found a tripod to hot shoe adapter, and this is what I'm going to be using for this light to mount to light stands and tripods. So you're going to want to take this little tripod to hot shoe adapter and remove one of the black discs at the top. Then we're going to take the screw and feed it through the bottom of our PVC pipe. 
Once the screw is through the PVC pipe, now take that black disc again and put it back onto the screw. Screw it in very tightly, just make sure that the hot shoe part that's sticking out has some room to be adapted to something in the future. So just screwing the tripod to hot shoe adapter in I don't think is enough, so we're going to be using some 5 minute epoxy to put over the inside of the adapter. After the epoxy is dry, let's take the PVC pipe outside and using some sandpaper, sand off the outer layer of the PVC pipe. This way it's going to be easier to spray paint black since I don't want the PVC pipe to be looking all white and ugly for a video light. I'm also going to take a reflector from a cheap Home Depot clamp light and going to spray paint the outside of it black as well since this will act as our reflector for the spotlight. Now of course after the PVC pipe dried, I noticed I forgot one hole. This hole is going to be on the bottom back of the PVC pipe, so away from the bottom air port. And what's going to be going inside of this hole is an XLR port. This XLR port is going to be powering the LED light, which we'll discuss later. With the PVC pipe all prepped, let's start working on some wiring. We're first going to wire up the fan. So I'm going to use a step down converter to regulate the voltage of our fan so we're going to take a red and a black wire and connect it to the positive and negative inputs on the step down converter we can then connect the positive and negative wires from the fan to the step down converter at this point i recommend if possible connecting a power adapter above 12 volts to the dc regulator this way we can adjust the potentiometer on the dc regulator and make sure the fan is operating at 10 to 12 volts i have it at roughly 10 volts which is a little lower than it should be this way the fan just runs a tad bit quieter at this point we have the heat sink all set up we have the fan all connected but we need to find out how to power the led so we're going to be powering the LED with a 150 watt voltage booster. This will boost any voltage up to 35 volts. We only need 30 volts and we only need 100 watts, so this voltage booster should work pretty well. An issue with this voltage booster though is it's hard to adjust the voltage once it's set. Meaning, once I set it to the 30 volts that I need the LED to operate at, I'm not going to be able to adjust it lower to dim the LED, which is a problem for video lights. Now, I could try to move the potentiometer whenever I wanted to adjust the LED, but this potentiometer on the voltage booster is really small. So I'm going to remove it, I'm going to add my own potentiometer as well as some resistors, and I'm going to make my own dimming circuit. But I'm not going to be covering that in this video. Video, so you're going to have to check out another video to go into detail on that. Moving away from the voltage booster for a minute, let's jump back to that fan guard that we removed from the fan heatsink earlier. We're going to cut out the middle of it. This way we can install a potentiometer in the middle, which the potentiometer is just going to be held down with some glue. So I understand this might be difficult to follow since I'm making you watch multiple videos, but once the voltage booster is all finished and connected to the LED on the heatsink, we're going to be putting everything into our PVC pipe. The heatsink, the voltage booster for the LED, the voltage regulator for the fan, it's all going to go inside of the PVC pipe. So first, take the heatsink and shove it into the PVC pipe. You want to have the lens and the LED facing the front, which the front is where the air intake is. So take the heatsink and shove it in through the back. And you want to make sure that the heatsink is lined up just enough that the reflector will easily sit on top of the LED lens. Once the heatsink is placed in the PVC pipe, it should be relatively snug. Take some 5 minute epoxy and epoxy up that heatsink to the inside of the PVC pipe. Make sure you connect the PVC pipe to the heatsink as well as the fan to the heatsink since even though they are super glued together, we want to make sure that every point is connected to the PVC pipe. With the heatsink officially installed in the PVC pipe, connected to the heatsink now is the voltage booster and the voltage regulator. Both of them should have red and black wires coming off of them, which you need to feed through the XLR hole in the PVC pipe. Then you want to connect both the reds and both the blacks together and solder them to the XLR port. 
When connecting the wires to the XLR port, it's important to take a look at an XLR wiring diagram because we want to make sure that all the positive connections are connected to the terminal 1 and all the negative connections are connected to the terminal 2. If by any chance you do mix up the positive and negative leads and you apply power to the entire circuit, be very cautious proceeding forwards since I did have a voltage regulator blow up in my hand because they were wired incorrectly, so please be careful. Anyway, once the positive and negative wires are connected to your XLR port, simply place the XLR port into the hole in the PVC pipe and use some screws to connect it firmly to the PVC pipe. I also used some super glue to cover the inside terminals of the XLR port just to make sure nothing shorts out and also make sure that the solder does not come off the XLR plugs since I had some trouble soldering it all together. Once the XLR port is installed in the PVC pipe, use hot glue, super glue, or epoxy to secure the voltage booster and the voltage regulator to the inside of the PVC pipe. This way the voltage booster and voltage regulator aren't bouncing around and potentially short circuiting or damaging anything. We're then going to want to use the fan guard which we glued a potentiometer to and glue it to the back of the PVC pipe. Luckily the fan guard is a little bit bigger than the PVC pipe so it doesn't fall in. Now finally take the reflector and place it over top of the LED lens. It should fit relatively nicely and I'm going to use some super glue to secure it to the PVC pipe. Though warning super glue isn't the greatest for this so I recommend finding some screws and screwing the reflector into the actual PVC pipe itself. And just to wrap up this DIY project, here's a poorly drawn diagram of how I wired everything. So I have a DC power supply, which actually is the XLR port that we installed on the light going to a switch, which I did not add the switch in this project, but I do recommend it. After the switch, however, we have it separating. So one positive terminal is going to go to a DC voltage regulator, which is going to be our fan controller essentially. And obviously that connects to the fan. But then going backwards, the other positive terminal is going to go to our voltage booster. Now the voltage booster has an input voltage and an output voltage. So obviously for the input, that's going to be connected to our power supply, but then the output on the voltage booster is going to connect to our LED light emitter. Additionally, we're going to modify the voltage booster and add a dimming circuit to it, which was not discussed in this video. Stay tuned for another video. So there you have it, that is how I made my DIY spotlight. Stay tuned, I have more videos coming on how I made the dimming circuit, how I'm powering it, and what the heck is this light behind me. But before I sign off here, let me quickly mention that this product is only a prototype. So if you're gonna make it, essentially make it at your own risk, but also don't be afraid to go away from my design. There are pros and cons which I'm gonna mention about this light, which might potentially be able to be overcome in revisions following. So with that said, pros and cons. Going with the pros, this light produces an insane, an insane amount of light. It is absolutely crazy. Additionally, the quality of the light is top notch. Um, I like the fact that I can change up what kind of power supply it uses. It can use batteries, it can use an AC outlet, but we'll talk about that in a different video. But let me quickly talk about the cons. So portability and durability. Yes, it is relatively compact, but this reflector makes it a little annoying to travel with. And the durability of this entire unit is not what I really wanted. The reflector at this point has come loose. Also, anything that I have super glued, anything that I have hot glued is prone to breaking off or coming loose, which means you have to do some minor maintenance, which is just unnecessary and frankly annoying. Additionally, there's a fan in here and it's audible. Um, you can try to lower the fan speed, but then you can't make the light as bright. So just keep that in mind. It is not a silent unit. Also, I think the final thing is directing the light. Because I only have this big reflector, I don't have any barn doors 
to try to direct the light. I have used this before. This is like a black aluminum foil. I forget what they actually call it. And I have simply taped over parts of the reflector so I can direct the light. But this takes an unnecessary, an unneeded amount of time, so it's not really practical. So overall, if I can make this unit more durable, more portable, and if I can direct the light, I think I got a really nice DIY spotlight on my hands. So you guys, let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, of course, let me know, and we'll, we'll work on this together. Anyway, guys, my name is Eric, and I'll catch you in the next video.